In the mountains of Tennessee, not far from Chattanooga, is the picturesque Raccoon Mountain Hydroelectric Power Plant. It's a water reservoir that's located on more than 500 hectares. The dam is 70 meters high and 1,800 meters long. But this is no ordinary hydroelectric plant. It's actually a pumped storage hydroelectric underground power station. A standard hydroelectric power plant generates electricity at the right time simply by discharging water over a dam. Pumped storage power plants like Raccoon Mountain operate on a different principle. These are giant battery replacements. Within them, electricity is first used to pump a large volume of water from the lower reservoir to the upper one. In our case, from the Tennessee River to the reservoir on top of the mountain. It takes 28 hours to fill the tank. Further, when the battery should give out electricity, water from the reservoir is discharged from a height of 320 meters through a tunnel drilled into the mountain. The stream powers underground power generators that can deliver a maximum of 1,652 megawatts of power for 22 hours. Why do we need such a complex facility? The global transition to green energy requires a lot of storage capacity to make clean energy sources sustainable and useful for consumers. And you can't produce lithium-ion batteries for everyone. There simply isn't enough cobalt and lithium in the world. This is how the forces of nature are used. But you can't build pumped storage hydropower plants everywhere. Skeptics say that all the best places are already taken. So what about alternatives? Scientists believe that the forces of water flow and gravity can be used in other ways. For instance, concrete spheres equipped with turbo generators can be lowered to the bottom of the sea. This technology is being simultaneously developed by American scientists from MIT and German scientists from the Fraunhofer Institute for Wind Energy and Energy System Technology in Kessel. But since the Germans are more advanced in field testing, we'll focus on their project the Stensi, storing energy at sea. How is it possible to store electricity in concrete spheres? The upper part of the structure is in the form of a cylinder, which is attached to a part that's in the form of a ball. Seawater circulates inside. When wind turbines or solar panels provide excess energy, water is pumped out of the spheres using pumps. And when consumers need electricity, the sphere is flooded and the water rotates the turbo generator. Electricity is back on the grid. The cost of storing electricity in such a project would be around six or seven euro cents per kilowatt hour, making the system more economical than most traditional pumped storage power plants. But at current energy prices, it's still commercially unprofitable without subsidies. However, experts have calculated that for a real commercial benefit, the diameter of the sphere should be about 30 meters and the thickness of the walls should be about 3 meters. The design capacity of such a sphere will be 20 megawatts. To do this, it must be installed at a depth of 700 meters and the slope of the seabed must be at least 1 degree. At the same time, the farm must be located within 100 kilometers from the power grid and the maintenance base as well as within 500 kilometers from the place of production. Seems too complicated? The researchers claim that there are many such places in the world, and they can potentially provide more than 800 terawatts of electricity per hour. For comparison, this is more than the whole of Germany consumes in a year. And the icing on the cake is that German scientists have successfully tested a 3-meter sphere at a depth of 100 meters in Lake Constance. The technology is fully operational and can be commercially viable. What's more, the spheres can be used as part of the foundation of offshore wind turbines, reducing the overall cost of energy projects. The only thing left to wait for is implementation of the first full-fledged project. In complex situations such as finding technology to store energy for renewable sources, we shouldn't rely on just one solution. Therefore, let's talk about another project the ocean battery from the Dutch startup Ocean Grazer. The Dutch came up with their own version of a pumped storage gravity system. 
They propose to place a 20 million liter reservoir under the seabed and fill it with pressurized water. It serves as the lower reservoir. When there is a surplus of energy to be stored, water is pumped to the upper reservoir via special pumps. In the ocean battery, this is the so-called bladder, which lies on the seabed. When electricity is needed, taps are opened and the liquid is pumped back to the lower reservoir under seawater pressure, simultaneously pumping turbo generators. The efficiency of the system is from 70 to 80 percent, that is, on the same level as classic pumped storage power plants. One reservoir in this project has a capacity of 10 megawatts, but this figure can be increased by using more turbo generators, although this increases the cost of the project. The estimated service life of the ocean battery is about 20 years, but that estimate will become clear when the first commercially used facilities will be built in 2025. The idea of gravitational energy storage systems isn't new. For example, pumped storage power plants have been under construction for more than 100 years. Has no one built industrial-scale working alternatives yet? Actually, HydroStore Incorporated can boast a successful experience. Their Toronto Hydro project has been operating in the waters of Lake Ontario, near Toronto, since 2015. The Canadians decided to take a slightly different path. Using excess electricity, they take air and use powerful compressors to pump it into large special airbags. Such reservoirs are held underwater due to the weighting structures. The reliability of the system is guaranteed by the use of the material from which the bags for lifting ships from the seabed are made. When electricity needs to be returned to the grid, the air is pumped under water pressure to the compressor station. There, in expanders with turbines, it again generates electricity. The power of the installation is relatively small, only 660 kilowatt hours. Within an hour, Toronto Hydro can provide energy to up to 25% of the city's population. The second project, successfully implemented by HydroStore Incorporated, shows that energy storage technologies do not always have to be tied to water resources. In 2019, an abandoned thermal mine in the city of Goderich became a substitute for a compressed air storage tank. Nothing extraordinary happens next. Compressors pump air into the mine and, when necessary, release it back and produce electricity. The project's capacity is 10 megawatts. In fact, in this project, the loss of efficiency is up to 35%. After all, the mine is not a hermetic object, unlike other variants, the efficiency of which is 75 to 80 percent. On the other hand, the cost of building a reservoir is eliminated. Therefore, this variant also has a right to exist. Examples of projects of HydroStar Incorporated show that underwater storage technology is effective even without scaling, especially in combination with other solutions. This allows them to save green electricity for consumers in the same environmentally friendly ways. The most important conclusion that we want to make in this video is that there are solutions. There are other projects at various stages of implementation that propose using the principle of gravity batteries to save green energy. The only thing left is to test them in practice and learn how to apply them as efficiently as possible in each specific situation. This is how we'll be able to fully switch to green energy sources and save this energy for its efficient use.